Eric Monteith. I'm an environmental engineer. Uh, an environmental engineer, as the name implies, deals with the environment. We uh, work together with people uh, on municipal uh, and community projects, uh, trying to ensure that we're taking complete care of the environment during those, uh, those projects. Uh, we're there to ensure that each of the clients is meeting the air, water, and soil quality regulations that's set out by the government, and to work with them to, uh, to make sure that our practices minimize the damage to the environment. To become an environmental engineer, you, you need a university degree. Um, within Canada, there's a number of universities that are accredited. Uh, engineering is a self-regulated profession, which means that they do have accreditation boards and uh, they review programs at various universities and determine which ones have a program that's up to their standard and is accredited to, to provide you with the degree you need. This job's cut out for a large number of people. Uh, the traditional stereotype of an engineer is someone who's very into math and science and I think that that perception's not altogether correct. Uh, I think engineering, different types of engineering integrates different personality traits, different uh, skill sets that a lot of different people have. Uh, definitely interpersonal skills, uh, problem solving, organizational skills are, are very important. Uh, as well as a strong technical background is definitely needed. As an environmental engineer, one of the most important aspects of our job is to ensure that we leave the earth as we found it. In North America, our economy is driven by big business, and we require such things as oil and gas refineries. This is a picture of the gas refinery in 1990, and here it is today. As you can see, we've removed all the equipment from the surface. As an environmental engineer, you're next responsible to ensure that everything below the surface is clean and that we leave no contaminants behind. We have the ultimate responsibility for our projects, ultimate responsibility to answer to our clients. Uh, we're responsible for bringing together a, a design team, technicians, draftsmen, surveyors, uh, subcontractors, other engineers, uh, and you take the responsibility for their work. One of the reasons there will always be need for an environmental engineer is that the population keeps growing and new communities keep being built. With each new community comes a need for water and, as a result, the need to treat the wastewater before we put it back in the rivers. While there are a lot of high-tech solutions out there, there's also low-tech solutions, such as a lagoon. A lagoon allows the water to be treated, uses its own bugs to treat, store it for a number of months, and we put it back in the river as clean water. I think the biggest impact that someone can have is to have a voice to uh, let the policy makers, let the regulation makers, let the, the government know that we're not going to accept economics as an excuse to uh, continue our practices with the environment, uh, to not have, to not allow positive change within the regulations. Um, in order to do that, those people have to become educated. I think your job should set out to make a difference, to make a positive impact. Uh, environmental engineering certainly does that. Uh, environmental engineering is a new field. Uh, it's ever changing right now. You get to be, you, you would get to come into a profession that is in its inception, that you get to make a positive difference. We're setting the rules right now. We're, we're changing the way people look at the environment. That's the most rewarding thing about being an environmental engineer today.